I'm Mayor Matt Girding. Call the February 20th, 2024 City Council meeting for the City of Summersworth to order. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yep. Vincent. Excused. Gibson. Forgot. Here. Parody Catanzaro. Here. Misho. Here. Witham. Here. Goodwin. Here. Cameron. Here. Messier. Here. All right. Councillor Parody Catanzaro will lead the council in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. Uh, this meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, uh, the people who have stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. That brings us to agenda item four, which are any scheduled public hearings. We have one public hearing scheduled for tonight, so I will open the public hearing on Ordinance 8-24, which is to amend Chapter 34, Exemptions and Credits, Section 34.6, Solar Exemptions, to re-adopt the provisions of RSA 72, 62, and limit the solar exemption to a maximum amount of $25,000. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on Ordinance 8-24 tonight in our public hearing? All right, anybody who wishes to speak? All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 8-24. Um, all right, next up we have Agenda Item 5, which are comments by visitors. Summers or City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at Council meetings. In accordance with Council Rules 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. Council shall not enter into debate with any person, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? All right, thank you. Please come on up, state your name and the ward you live in, and make sure the microphone is on. Perfect, thank you. Um, Michelle Nash, I live at 78 Winter Street, which is Ward 1. Um, I just wanted to come out tonight to let you know that I know the school board has been presenting you. It's budget season. It's a terrible time. Um, but they are asking you to consider overriding the tax cap. And I want to let you know that as a taxpayer, I'm in favor of it. Um, I also work in the school. So I see firsthand some of the things over the last several years that have been detrimental to having the tax cap, positions that have been cut, programs that have been reduced. Um, we have had this past year we had a lot of teacher positions i work in kindergarten so we are seeing the effects of that where we now our class sizes are at least five kids more than we had the previous year um so that's not what's best for our students high class sizes is not an indication of that um we've had in the past several years we used to have three special ed aides at, aides at idlehurst and now we're down to one that that person with that job is resigning this year, so they're not going to renew that position. So there's another position that's gone. I know you probably have heard a lot about the SYC program and how enriching that is to the student center, and that is in jeopardy. It's not, I, I guess we're, it's like we're trimming the fat, but now we're getting to the meat of the education system in Summersworth, and I'm really getting concerned. Um, I work in the school, so my budget's not a lot either. Um, you guys all can tell how much money I make. It's not a lot. And uh, I just feel like even as a taxpayer, I'm willing to pay more to have more for our students. We need to consider overriding the tax cap for our families, for our community, and especially for our kids. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak tonight? Anybody else? All right, thank you so much. All right, that will bring us to agenda item six on the agenda, which is the approval of the consent calendar. 
Uh, the chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the city council and summers or school board joint budget workshop held on February 5th of 2024, as well as the minutes of the city council meeting held on February 5th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the consent calendar. Thank you so much. Councilor Witham moves that the consent calendar be approved as presented, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Question before the council is the adoption of the consent calendar. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. All right, the ayes appear to have it. Uh, the ayes have it, and the consent calendar is adopted. Um, item seven on our agenda tonight is comments by city councilors. Are there any comments tonight by city councilors? Councilor Parody Canzero. Thank you. Um, thank you, Michelle, uh, for coming and speaking tonight. Um, I got several emails about uh, the tax cap uh, overriding, as I'm sure. I know at least uh, a few of them were passed on to the entire city council um, from Elizabeth, Jalen, and Crystal, and now Michelle. And there was a woman who spoke up at a recent um, event that I was at out in the community who just happened, the topic was childcare, and she just happened to be a Summersworth resident and talk about how important the SYC program was to her, um, being able to pay 20 to $30 a week instead of 300 to $400 a week, as is the average childcare cost. Um, I really appreciate that, especially from the framing as a taxpayer, as a taxpayer myself, I, I fully agree that it's worth paying a little bit extra to make sure our students are um, have what they need. And this is certainly not a budget, even overriding the tax cap that is going to be, um, it's, it's just keeping us at what we need. It's, it's nothing too extravagant. So thank you for your comments. Thank you. Other counselors who wish to comment, Councilor Witham. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your comments. We often enter the budget season. I'd contend that we're entering it even a little bit earlier this year, so uh, the, 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 the budget concerns are real, uh, and we're gonna have some difficult waters to navigate. Um, and I'm sure that folks can appreciate for the, the people that want us to override the tax cap, there's the same number of people that want us to not override the tax cap. So it, puts us in a very challenging position. I think ultimately, and, and we don't have the budget yet, that won't happen until sometime after March 15, uh, and then we'll begin the process with the city council. Typically, April is the big budget month for us. Um, we will wrangle not only with the needs to provide uh, what the school department needs to provide, I'm gonna use the word an adequate education, don't ask me to define that, but uh, it's not a tax cap compliant budget. I think we recognize that. Uh, we need to look at city services and the important things that we do there. And all of those have a, a budget implication uh, up to and including the tax cap. Because even though it's a tax cap, there's a budget implication to that, right? There's a value per thousand that that will increase. I don't think we know what that is yet, but we will get that. Um, and then we have to look at if we go above the tax cap by how much every hundred and fifteen thousand dollars is about ten cents on the budget on per thousand so uh, is it ten cents twenty cents thirty cents a dollar above the tax cap I'm some guidance there would be helpful from folks so uh, appreciate the comment of override but to what extent, because that's gonna be the bigger challenge, I suspect. It's not whether we override, but by how much. Uh, and guidance there would be helpful. But I do appreciate the comments tonight because oftentimes uh, we go into budget season and no one shows up at public hearings. Uh, we have no guidance. Uh, I've often said I'm gonna download a cricket sound effect on my phone and play it during public hearings because there's nobody. Hopefully this year that changes and we get some guidance. Perhaps your comments tonight are, are a start to that. So thank you. Thank you so much. Other comments by counselors this evening? All right, seeing as there are none, we will move on to agenda item eight, which is communications. We have none. Um, brings us to agenda item nine, which is presentations of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherwise, which we also have none. Um, which brings us to agenda item 10, which is the mayor's report. Um, so this past Thursday, February 15th, um, I attended the New Hampshire Mayor's Meeting, uh, which is an open meeting to all 13 of the New Hampshire mayors. 
Um, at this meeting, 10 of the 13 mayors attended, me being one of them. Uh, it was our first meeting uh, with the current contingent of New Hampshire mayors uh, since essentially the November elections. And our meeting uh, started, you know, pretty normally as they most of them do for first meetings with introductions. Um, and then we were updated by some of the um, long-term mayors on some of the past efforts that this group had worked on. Uh, we then also utilized our time to share out some of the goals for the year uh, that the third, or well, at this meeting, the 10 of us had uh, kind of identified for ourselves and for this group. And at this goal sharing session, we identified the following goals, which would be homelessness, uh, housing, child care, education, as well as uh, the pending upcoming 2025-2026 New Hampshire State Biennial Budget. Um, so a large portion of this meeting uh, was then spent discussing the first priority that I mentioned, which was homelessness. Uh, each mayor shared out what was currently being done within their city to tackle this issue, as well as challenges that each city faces. I spoke, I was actually the only mayor from the Tri-Cities that attended, so I spoke uh, for the three of us and spoke about some of the challenges we have seen over the past year, or multi many years. Uh, I spoke about the warming center and our coordination with the county um, and kind of filled in the other mayors on the work that we've been doing. Um, there's also a lot of useful information from a number of the other mayors. Uh, and it was clear that this was an issue that all of us would be able to kind of coalesce around and felt that um, as cities in New Hampshire, um, it was something that we were all seeing. And I think, uh, maybe it, I don't want to say it's a problem unique to just cities, but I think that uh, homelessness is a problem that we tend to have to tackle more than some of the towns. Um, so we then began to identify ways in which we can advocate as a collective group on this particular issue. We identified some uh, current bills in the state Senate and House that we would work towards uh, potentially doing some advocacy around um, and are looking to gather some data uh, from all of the cities in order to create joint letters and things like that that we can read at some of the hearings for these bills. Uh, so more to come on that. That was kind of the end of the meeting. Uh, we're looking to meet monthly, so I'll hopefully be able to update you monthly on what we talk about, um, and hopefully a lot more will come out of this. Um, I believe our next meeting's second week of March, so keep your ears peeled. Um, I'd also like to announce uh, that the Mayor's Housing Task Force, speaking about housing, uh, will have its first meeting this Thursday on February 22nd here uh, in Council Chambers at 5 p.m. Uh, it will be our first meeting come together as a newly formed committee, so a large portion of this meeting will be dedicated towards goal setting as well. I encourage any counselors here tonight or folks who are watching either here in the audience or at home, uh, if you have specific goals that you would like this task force on housing to work on, please don't hesitate to share that with me or with the other committee members. Uh, certainly all ideas are welcome. Um, there's a lot that needs to be done on housing, not just in Summersworth, but throughout the state and probably throughout the country. Um, so all ideas are welcome. So please feel free to share. Um, I also want to announce that uh, the State Board of Education, this is something that I track because uh, I'm just an education policy nerd, um, but the State Board of Education is working to revise and has been working to revise the rules that govern the operation of public schools in the state of New Hampshire. This is a very large undertaking that they've uh, had kind of sitting in the wings for a couple years. Uh, and these uh, rules, which are kind of in a more wonky way called like the ED 306s, so if you've heard of those, that's what these are. Um, these rules, again, govern everything from credits that high schools uh, need to, are required to have, competencies that schools must have, attendance, uh, diversity, uh, equity provisions, all these things are held within this very giant document that is currently being revised. Um, there was a task force put together by the state board and they actually contracted out and spent about $75,000 of state money to uh, work on this to create a new set of rules. Uh, that task force submitted a recommendations, who, when was this? A few months ago. I believe they hit the state board not that, not too long ago. Uh, however, the Department of Education and actually really the Commissioner of Education decided to scrap those rules and submit his own rules that he would like to see um, go forward. So these rules are now in uh, 
going to be in public hearing on April 8th at 1 p.m. at the State Board of Education. They should be publicly made publicly available in advance of that meeting. Um, but uh, first glance at these rules, there's a number of concerning changes that I wanted to identify. Uh, one being that the cap on class sizes will be eliminated. So high schools and middle schools and kindergarten even uh, could have as many students as their school boards uh, allowed to have attend each class. Uh, there's also a number of equity provisions that were scrapped um, and many, many other things uh, that potentially endanger the um, safety and sanctity of New Hampshire public schools. So I wanted to highlight that tonight because if you are so inclined, uh, they are accepting uh, submit, you know, public input on these rules. There's a, again a public hearing on April 8th, which you could go speak at, or if you wanted to submit uh, written testimony, uh, that can be found through the DOE's website, and then you would search the State Board of Education on that website. Um, a few other things I wanted to point out is tonight under appointments and elections, I have a number of appointments. Uh, before us tonight, we have Donna Donovan, excuse me, Donna Donovan, I can say that, uh, for reappointment to the Library Board of Trustees. Uh, Ms. Donovan has served as the chair of this board for a number of years and has done a phenomenal job as chair. With her position coming up this month, I would respectfully request that we uh, get this agenda item into its second reading so that council can approve the nominee tonight. So I'll be looking for another uh, uh, suspension of council rules when we get to that point. Um, also, after over a month of having a vacancy, we have finally received an application for Ward 5 School Board. Thank you to Gemma Soldati for applying for this position. Uh, again, council will vote tonight on the applicant. Hope we can fill that so school board has a full board. Um, and also under appointments and elections, I'll be reappointing two members of the Traffic Safety Committee, uh, both Jenny Holmes and Paul Robitis. Uh, again, these were appointments will not require a council vote, but I am happy to reappoint them as they've served on that for a number of years as well. All right, my final item tonight is that uh, we are still accepting submissions for the Mayor's Quarterly Art Show. This is the final reminder, however, because they are due March 1st. So again, if you are interested in submitting artwork, please email that over to me at mgerding at summersworthnh.gov, including your name, information about the art, uh, and a description of the work. Uh, the committee, the Mayor's Arts and Culture Committee, will be meeting, I'll be asking them to meet uh, over the month of March to select the finalists to then have their work shown in the Mayor's office. But yeah, with that, I respectfully conclude my Mayor's report. Thank you so much. All right, brings us to agenda item 11, which is reports of standing committees. Well, first up is the Finance Committee, uh, Chairman Witham. Thank you. We've not met since our last meeting. However, we do have a meeting planned for tomorrow uh, here in Council Chambers at 4 p.m. Uh, rather lengthy agenda. We should be done by midnight to committee members. <laughs> Just kidding. But long agenda. Thank you. Uh, next up, Government Operations Committee, Chairman Mishu. We haven't had a meeting yet, Your Honor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, next up, Economic Development Committee, Chairman Goodwin. Uh, no meeting since last meeting. Thank you. Uh, Public Safety Committee, Chairman Pepin. Yes, I do have a meeting. We had a meeting on February 7th here at the Council Chambers. Uh, all members of the committee were present outside of uh, Councilman Vincent. Uh, we approved the minutes of uh, past minutes of October 16th, uh, past 201 abstain. Uh, the first thing that we did, we had an update from the police department. Uh, the chief gave us an update on ADSERT program. Uh, this is a assertive children experience response team. This is dealing with kids that are, are been injected to either violence in their house, a death, uh, it could be any, any type of things that, that would affect their, their behavior or affect their emotions or whatever. Um, the chief went into details that uh, it was funded and the one that was running, doing the funding was United Way. Uh, we reapplied for the grant and the grant was denied. Um, so the chief is basically re looking for another pair, pair of grants, which he has found another grant, uh, which is $140,000 of money that's available, but it has to be divided between seven different communities. 
So he is uh, working into details to try to find out if there's something feasible for our community and, and basically will report back to us uh, if he has anything else up on that. Um, he did also mention about the air conditioning system, which is a resolution 3324, which I believe is up here tonight. Um, he went through all the details of what, what it consists of inside the facility. Uh, the uh, committee voted to, to sponsor that, uh, to help uh, approve that resolution in, in the future, uh, which basically has already been funded, I think, if it's being funded. Um, he also gave us a report on uh, replacement communication approval for the installation of uh, the repeater system on top of the former Hilltop School and uh, replacement of our facility radar for the public works. Um, we went through the details of uh, two-way communications and what it basically pertained. Uh, it will probably be a, a request going to the Finance Committee the amount of money is probably $130,000. Hopefully that was with the contingency. Uh, we voted 3-0 to, to support that resolution when it comes forth. Uh, there was a brief discussion, um, a little bit about the antenna system being up on the Hilltop School, and it's probably something that I brought up. Um, I don't like it being on a private building, personally, because uh, it's almost like owning the facade here in, in the, the thing. Uh, I have problems if the building's sold or something happens to the building or whatever. Um, we are in the process of looking at a new water tank. We did discuss a possibly putting towers up on the water tank and probably renting spaces out there. Uh, I did bring it up, so hopefully that uh, we probably could save a spot for, us, for our communication center and have it on city property. That would be something that probably be looked into in the future for future discussions. Um, the chief did report that all the tasers are back. Are, the new tasers are in use, and the department have been trained on them, so they're all up and running. Um, he also gave us an update on the uh, fire Depa uh, police department council. Uh, at the time, present at the time of the the meeting, uh, the wiring was installed, but the radios weren't. So far now, as far as I know, everything's pretty much complete. Um, so. Uh, they're up and running right now, and uh, my son's a dispatcher down there, and I know he's tickle pink, so it says everything's working great. So uh, so we had an update from Chief Delna. Uh, he gave us a, basically a rundown of uh, the damages that were done inside the, um, inside the fire station with the sprinkler head damage. Uh, basically went through the, the cost of the repairs, um, even though our insurance is taking care of it. It's basically, the cost would be a thousand dollars for the city of Somerset, um, as far as what our deduction is from from our Primax. Um, he also did give us an update on the Somerset Middle School safety inspection. As you know, there were some concerns of one of the students that um, brought up some things about the school as we were going through one of the meetings here previously. Um, the fire marshal, the police. The fire, fire department and SAU members went through the middle school and also went through the high school on January 5th. Uh, basically, what they found is basically household ma uh, matters that basically uh, are no, are found no life-threatening incidents, which is minor stuff. Um, as far as the fire alarm system in the middle school, it being not heard and stuff, uh, what they're in the process of doing is that when there's no schools, one of these days that the fire alarm company is going to come in and take decibel readings with the doors shut and stuff to make sure that there's, that the fire alarm is adequately being uh, being taken care of. The uh, chief also gave us an update on grant. grant. Um, we received a hunt grant for basically the fire tower that was supposed to be in the new station, which that didn't get construction because of time delays. That was $120,000. Staff has been working to try to uh, see if that can be reappropriated, which we did get approval for. Um, and some of the stuff that the chief has came up with is that a river rescue boat, a training simulator, uh, training props, which are for doors, roofs, fire extinguishers, and an EV car battery suppression system, 
with these new cars and new types of batteries out there is that water doesn't work and the regular extinguishers don't work, so we kind of like have to get a new suspension system to kind of to combat those types of fires. Um, and that will be it as far as fire department. Paul Robitis gave us an update on the EMS uh, numbers. As far as the responses, uh, they've gone down a little bit from, from 2022 to 2023, basically because we were at the end of COVID, and basically the calls have been reduced. Uh, 2024, since the month of January, he's noticed an increase in calls uh, during that month period. So, um, and the two new ambulances are up. Supposedly, we're waiting to be put in service from state inspections. They're all ready to go. We're just waiting for the state to come down to verify that everything meets the, the state standards. Um, so uh, the staff are very, very happy with the new ones. They're a little bit bigger than the amb other ambulances, which gives them more room. Uh, so it, it's um, as far as staff and they're down possibly one or two personnel that they could actually utilize. Um, we did put down on the agenda, at least I asked for the agenda, basically uh, update a little bit on the warming centers of what it could be, how it's influenced uh, police department, fire department, ambulance service, emergency services. Um, the first thing I did is I asked um, Manager Robitis a little bit about the ambulance service and the response. Um, some of the things that he brought out was that the response times uh, calls are not really overwhelming at the warming center, but it's also uh, they're going out into the woods, they're going out on the side of the roads, and they're going to local businesses that they're transporting. Um, it is, um, as Stewart's Ambulance basically bills insurance companies to get their revenue, uh, most of these people do not have insurance. And so basically it is causing some uh, financial burden on them. So that was something to be aware of. Um, so we just wanted to make that clear. Um, ask the chief about activities as far as the warming shelter. The only thing that he's seen is that there's been an increase a little bit as far as the numbers of uh, businesses reporting people going through through their cars in the parking lots and stuff. He says he cannot confirm that it's people from the homeless shelter or whatever, but that, that has been a slight increase. Um, he did report in January, from January 17th, there's been 20 police calls, uh, nine fire department calls, and six ambulance calls. And under miscellaneous, uh, the city manager went through uh, some of the things for the supposed budget coming up this year. It looks like it's going to be affecting the police, uh, fire department. Some of it's going to be affecting the, the police department. Uh, uh, Scott Air Packs things are being pushed back a year. So um, the budget is going to be tight this year. And we adjourned at 5.03. Thank you so much. All right, next up is Public Works and the Environment Committee. Uh, Chairman Witham. No report. Thank you. And last up, uh, Recreation Committee, Chairwoman Cameron. We are looking to schedule one in the middle of March. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, next up is Agenda Item 12, which is reports of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees tonight? Yes. Councillor Pepin. Yes, had an E911 committee meeting on February 15th, 12 o'clock at Somerset Police Department. Uh, just one thing on the agenda is the Woodland Drive addresses and stuff. Um, uh, we, we revisited that uh, again. It has been, we determined that it's going to be quite a burden on one of the things because he has uh, military contracts and stuff. So we kind of like re looked at everything all over. The northern side of Woodland Drive is basically all taken up as far as as far as businesses, so as far as changing many numbers over there, that's it probably would be a, a problem us leaving it. We looked as far as the other side of the street. Uh, we don't see that there'd be that much development that would cause a problem for us to renumber the whole the whole street again. 
So uh, we've had two people that really don't want their numbers changed, kind of went over it again. It's, we'd like to try to keep conforming with the state, uh, state guidelines, but in this case here, we don't feel at this present time that's necessary to change the numbering system right now. So, and we basically cleared 1209. <laughs> Thank you. All right, any other reports of special committees? Yes, Councillor Parity Canzero. Um, just briefly, um, as I was appointed to the Coast uh, Bus Committee, we haven't officially met since I was appointed. Um, we're meeting soon, but I did uh, meet with Rad Nichols over there at Coast Bus and the Director of Operations and got onboarded um, and just wanted to share a little bit of a preview that um, I don't think that we were able to get um, the full you know, presentation that they often will go around. I think there's a scheduling conflict with uh, Summersworth, but um, ridership is up in Summersworth is one of the top lines, which is great. Um, ridership has continued to increase since COVID, which is also great. I know they've done a lot of upgrades to make sure that everything is safe and clean and airflow and everything like that. Um, we did also get a, um, I received a message from a resident this past week about inquiring about a bus stop in their area. Um, and so I learned that, you know, in addition to there's a few routes going through Summersworth, um, federal funding and federal mandates um, dictate that the Coast Bus needs to provide on-demand ADA services within three quarters of a mile of bus stops. Um, but there's quite a lot of communities, including, unfortunately, the person who reached out to me, um, that do not, are not within that radius. And so they fall under... Um, the majority of people who are not walkable to a bus stop. And I did ask sort of along the lines of what we talk about with um, the homelessness issue, you know, what is the county doing about it? Um, and unfortunately, the county, you know, from their perspective, Coast doesn't have full coverage on the entire county, right? Summers Earth is actually doing pretty good in that area. Dover, Rochester, some of the bigger cities, but um, the county in full is not everybody in the county is serviced by that. So they have some challenges there, um, but they do have a good relationship with the county and get some county, some state, some federal funding, but um, it's always a challenge. So just a little preview there from Coast, and I'm sure I'll have uh, more of an update after our next meeting. Thank you. Other reports of special committees? Yes, Councillor Goodwin. Uh, the Eyes on 30 committee met uh, directly before this meeting. Uh, the conversation was largely an onboarding conversation for the benefit of myself and other new members, um, getting orientated with uh, the mission of the committee and the prior work of the committee members to identify um, initiatives that they were looking to dig into. And we uh, reviewed all that and had a good conversation and then... Uh, set forth a future agenda item of, of revisiting um, or folding in some new ideas now that there are some new members before uh, moving forward with the prioritization um, sort of assignment phase of the committee. And that's it. Great. Thank you. Other reports of special committees? Seeing none, I will turn it over to the city manager to deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Anna. Members of, uh, of council, I think we covered um, comments at the last meeting for all the new business and we're just taking up unfinished business this evening but just a couple of brief reminders uh, in regards to uh, solar exemption ordinance 8-24 in 2017 the council implemented a solar exemption under the state law of the large changed so uh, after seeking um, city attorney advice and advice from our chief uh, property assess assessor um, we believe uh, the council should consider readopting uh, the solar ordinance and providing a uh, cap to the exemption uh, the assessor recommends if council readopts the solar exemption we set a uh, amount of money recommend setting in a, a set amount of money off of the assessed value to offset any additional assessed value that would contribute to the overall assessment. For example, the average exemption at this time is 12,500 based on the value of the solar panels. When the revaluation is completed, we expect the value may double. So the recommendation of staff is to uh, the exemption amount be equal to the added value for the solar panels with a maximum amount of $25,000, whichever is less. 
so in other words, if you don't readopt it, uh, currently folks who have the solar exemption will no longer get it. So we need to re revisit it and readopt it under the new state legislation process. So hopefully uh, you were able to read that memo and and um, be able to move forward on that. The only other thing I would mention is under resolution 3524 in regards to accepting the new public ways on the Greenfield uh, subdivision. Uh, we did receive the uh, bonding instrument and city attorney uh, and I and city staff have worked uh, with the developer's attorney and we have a uh, deed that's ready to uh, be recorded. So that's teed up for council action this evening. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. That brings us to agenda item 13, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Under nominations, appointments, and elections in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following nominee is introduced this evening in place in nomination. Uh, Donna Donovan for reappointment to the Library Board of Trustees with a term to expire on February 2029. Yes, Councilor Witham. Your Honor, I'd like to suspend Council Rules to act on the nominee this evening. Councilor Witham moves that Council Rules be suspended in order to have a vote on the nominee this evening, seconded by Councilor Cameron. The question before the Council is to suspend Council Rules to vote on the nominee this evening. So all those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. All right, the ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and council rules are suspended. Uh, what are the wishes of the council with this nominee? Councilor Witham. Your Honor, I move that the council approve the nominee. Councilor Witham moves that the nominee be confirmed, seconded by Councilor uh, Parity Catanzaro. Uh, question before the council, is the confirmation of Donna Donovan for reappointment to the Library Board of Trustees with a term to expire February 2029. Uh, all those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. All right, the ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and the nominee is confirmed. Uh, next up, we'll have a vote to fill the vacancy of the Ward 5 school board uh, member uh, until the next municipal or state election. Uh, this is a roll call vote as required by our city charter, and the nominee tonight is Gemma Soldati for Ward 5 school board. Uh, what are the wishes of the council? Yes, uh, Councillor Freddie to Council. approve the nomination. Councillor Parity Catanzaro moves to approve the nominee, seconded by Councillor Goodwin. Question for the council, is the confirmation of Gemma Soldati for Ward 5 School Board until the next municipal or state election? Is there discussion tonight? Yes, Councillor Witham. Yeah, just I'd like to thank uh, Gemma for putting her name in uh, to serve as a school board member. It has been vacant uh, for this entire term so far. Uh, you know, at, at one point in time, Ward 5 was smaller than it is now. Uh, we did do a ward realignment, so uh, this represents a, an equitable portion of our community. Uh, so uh, it's important that it be filled in the, the folks of Ward 5 have that voice for them. Other discussion? All right, seeing I just have a question. Oh, yes, go ahead. Um, does that mean that this role will be, like there will be one local election on our ballot at the state election? It'll be our next municipal or state, which I believe would be the state primary is the next possible one. So yeah, I'm getting oh, not okay. from the city manager. Okay, other discussion or questions? Yes, Councilor Goodwin. So to clarify, this is a nomination until the September primary? Uh, the, it is currently scheduled for September, though I have heard word that the state legislature is trying to bump it forward. But yes, the state, the primary for state office. Yeah. Other dis comments, discussion? Great. Okay. So if you are in favor of the nominee, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. And I will call on the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parody Catanzaro. Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Bessier? Yes. All right. Nominee is so far confirmed. Thank you. Uh, lastly, there are two appointments tonight uh, which do not require a confirmation vote by council. Uh, Jenny Holmes as a member of the Traffic Safety Committee and Paul Robitis as the member of the Traffic Safety Committee as well. So they are now reappointed. All right. That brings us to agenda item 14 which is items that have been laid upon the table. We have none tonight. We'll jump to agenda items 15, which is unfinished business. 
Uh, we first up have our ordinances. We have one ordinance tonight that is under unfinished. Uh, the chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on ordinance 8-24 to amend chapter 34, exemptions and credits, section 34.6, solar exemption to readopt the provisions of RSA 72 62 and limit the solar exemption to a maximum amount of 25,000, which if approved would allow for property tax exemption on solar energy systems up to $25,000. City Clerk. Ordinance number 824, amend chapter 34 exemptions and credits, section 34.6 solar exemption to readopt the provisions of RSA 72 62 and to limit the solar exemption to a maximum amount of $25,000. All right, ordinance 8-24 having been read a first and now second time is open to further amendments. Yes, Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Um, at least for the purposes of discussion, um, I would like to propose an amendment to um, change whichever is less to whichever is greater. All right, so we have an amendment. I'll second it for the purpose of discussion. Okay, thank you. We have a second on the motion to change uh, the language from whatever is less to whatever is greater. All right, so again, if you are in favor of the motion on the table, you will vote by saying aye. Do we discuss discussion on, Oh, we can discuss. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. My apologies. I was rushing to the end. Um, with this a motion and a second, we will open it up for discussion. Yes. Yeah. Go so ahead. the reason is, um, and you know, provide clarification from whoever can. But um, if the purpose of this is to make sure that the solar exemption covers this cost, and the previous version was roughly equal to the cost of twelve thousand five hundred. And now we're saying it's going to be reassessed to likely double to twenty-five thousand. Um, it does say, or amount of twenty-five thousand, or equal to the added assessed value. I just wonder why we wouldn't leave it at, you know, if, if the assessed value increases a little bit more to say twenty-seven or thirty thousand. Don't we still want that exemption to apply if the goal is to make sure that? you know, it's covered and therefore to encourage people to use the solar panels. So that's, that's my question to whomever wants to <laughs> so anyone answer who that can answer. or address it. <laughs> yes, Councilor Rhythm, do you have an answer? I, I, I defer to city staff to answer that question. Um, it's funny, when you were making the amendment, I thought it was going to be on the dollar value. I thought we were just cutting it a little too tight at 25000 as I've thought about this a little bit more. Yeah. So I hear your intent. Uh, maybe the answer is just a higher dollar value, like thirty thousand mm -hmm. uh, for residential. It provides us with a cushion, if you will. So that's where I'm leaning right now. But I appreciate the mm -hmm. conversation that's happening. Before I jump to Councillor Gibson, I just want to make sure your question is answered. Do you feel satisfied? Do you want me to pull in the city manager? Do you have any more to add to that? I'll just yeah, just let the okay. discussion continue. Thank and, you, yeah. Councillor Gibson. I don't have a problem with the exemption in itself, except for <sighs> it seems to be more a subsidy for people who can afford to pay to have solar panels installed. It's just like when the government came out with all these tax credits for electric cars, which again, the people who were buying electric cars were people who had large discretionary income. They could afford to make that choice. Um, I don't have a problem with having an exemption for it, but I'm not in favor of making it any larger than it is at the present. If you can afford to buy solar panels That adds to the value of your house. What need you an exemption to help pay for them? That's Thank you. my point. Uh, Councilor Goodwin. Um, to that point, um, m many uh, solar programs do not require any money up front. I have solar panels in my house that I put on last year cost me zero dollars. I entered a power purchase agreement with a third party. Um, and now I pay a third party for a committed period of time. I think it's 20 years in my case. Uh, and they essentially rent my roof for the 
uh, right to sell me power from the panels that are on my roof. Um, so it cost me zero money to do that. I have clean energy. I have a cheaper price uh, than the grid price. Um, but to your point, it does potentially increase the value of my home. And that's where I think this is really required. Um, I will add to the conversation from um, the amount. I also feel like 25000 isn't that much when it comes to panels because again I didn't pay anything I think the panels if I were to pay for them if, if they because they give you options right I could have bought them um because they, obviously they'll sell, sell me them but I want to say they were like I don't remember like yet yeah, something something in this range like thirty thousand dollars or so and it's like, I don't know thirty thousand dollars kicking around for solar pa panels so I entered the essentially the finance plan um so the twenty five thousand does seem maybe a little low and the other nuance I'll add to this is there's no growth provision in this. So if it's not low now, it will be very low in the not so distant future. <laughs> so I kind of think having something that helps it step up over time might be helpful if uh, not adjusting the base to now. Thank you, Councillor Witham, then Councillor Gibson. Thank you. Um, Going back to 2017, I was on council then when the original solar exemption was adopted and we didn't want taxation of the solar panels adding to the property, to the value of your home to serve as an impediment to someone uh, seeking clean energy. That was the sole driving force. We, we wanted to incentivize it, not disincentivize it. State law has changed. We now need to structure the language differently, uh, and putting a dollar value on it uh, makes sense. So, although I I, I hear uh, Councillor Parity Captain Zero's uh, amendment, I, I really think it's a change in the dollar value uh, to some number that's larger. Um, I think, like any ordinance, uh, to Councillor Goodwin's point periodically they need to be refreshed it's sometimes hard to bake in an escalator not you know you don't know what you don't know uh, I, I think we all know it's probably going to go up but just when and how much that's hard to know so I think a, a slightly larger number makes sense here uh, I would also note that although I'm not an assessor assessed value which is what we're talking about here in value to construct are two different numbers. Uh, you build a new home today, it costs you, uh, I don't know, $700,000. It's probably not gonna be assessed at $700,000. It's gonna be assessed at something different, right? So those numbers differ, sometimes a little, sometimes a lot. So um, I, I hear the concern there, but um, I think the more I talk about this, I, I just like a slightly larger number. I think 30,000 provides us, based upon uh, our assessor's estimate, it provides us with a bit of a cushion there. Uh, I think it does provide for a few years of escalation before we need to, to dust this off. I think that's where I'm leaning right now. I could be persuaded otherwise, but I think that's where I'm at. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Gibson, then City Manager. I'll go back to what I said originally, which is that the whole problem with our tax system in this country is that we keep adding these little tidbits to it, which overly complicates it, and go beyond that to my original statement. You're incentivizing people to get solar. That's a great idea in theory, but the problem is that only certain people can do it. I'll give you a for instance. I can't have solar. I'm not allowed to have it. So you're picking and choosing winners and losers when you do this. Keep the exemption. I don't have a problem with that. But to make it with a higher maximum on it, I can't agree with. Because, again, some people can, some people can't. So you're basically giving a tax advantage to one group of people over another that 
It's a commercial decision. It's not a property decision. Thank you. City Manager. I guess I just reiterate uh, that it's staff's recommendation. She is a certified uh, assessor, appraiser, certified by DRA. Uh, she does other communities, so she's in tune with uh, what other communities are doing. Um, I'm a little confused when it says 25000 or 30000 whichever is greater. It seems like if uh, everybody's going to get twenty five or 30000 I would I leave it whichever is less, quite frankly, um, the way the language was recommended. The other safeguard is, you know, if this jumps up automatically to a larger number, uh, they can file an abatement, and that would be grounds for an abatement uh, before we could get a better number, whether it's 30, 35, or 50, at a later date, back to council for further amendments. So uh, just some thoughts to chew on. Councilor Goodwin. Now I'm reading this a little more, more closely. <clears throat> um, the 25000 is the tax increment, not the value of the system, right? Okay. So do we have any sense of how these... I have no idea how to that's a Witham's point, how the solar like I know I have a vague idea of how much it costs, but I have no idea how much it is assessed for. So is twenty five thousand a lot of solar? I have I have no idea how we got to this number now. <laughs> City manager, do you have possibly an answer? No, I don't know that I can answer uh with any real Certainty it's we're relying on a certified person who's in the been in the business for many many years and uh, We've relied on has done very good work for the city and she's certified by DIRA and has the proper certifications and education to give us a firm recommendation Are there other comments discussion tonight on this amendment councillor parity cat and zero? Yeah, um, I think I still I still feel like whichever is greater covers the intent. I think if I understand from Councilor Within that the reason that there is a dollar value at all is because state law says you have to have a dollar value. Is that true? Councilor Within. <laughs> that was my understanding when it rolled through committee. Um, I think the point of whichever is less versus whichever is greater, whichever is is less. So if the assessed value of your solar system is, we'll use the number that's currently in the ordinance, $25,000, that's, uh, that's the max, right? That's the, the ceiling. If the, the value is less than that, then that is the relief you get. You don't get the $25,000 relief if that, you, if your system is worth right. 20,000, you get 20,000 worth of relief, not, it's whichever is less, I think. I didn't know I was getting into an English class here tonight, yeah, but yeah. I think that's, that's where we are. I guess if, um, Go ahead. I, I understand why we wouldn't want whichever is greater. And I mean, I, I, that cover, the whichever, is less covers if it's less than 25,000. I think what I'm thinking about is it's inevitably going to go up, so why wouldn't we just say what we're trying to do, which is we're gonna cover however much this solar addition adds to your assessed value. Um, and so for those purposes, I think I would agree that maybe jumping up to 30 covers us for at least a few more years, but. Um, Did you see it, uh, Councilor Messier? Do we have someone here yeah it, it, what this is is ex an exemption and they're capping it at 25,000 not every solar panels array on a individual's roof is assessed at the same some have larger some have smaller this is about a solar exemption tax exemption the impetus way back in the beginning was was so that the town or city would not just arbitrarily say an increased value of a house. Seems good. They're capping it at 25000 Some are going to be cheaper because they're going to be smaller arrays. So that's all this is. We're not giving anything away to anybody. Councillor Goodwin's house, 
somebody else paid for it. But when it comes to tax assessment, they're going to assess that house. So somebody's going to get a credit, and it'll be Council Goodwin. They're capping it at 25 because some of them aren't. If you drive by and look, some are small, some are lot, some panels is 16, some are 8. So that's, it's, it's an assessor's number. So we have to rely on the professional assessor to give us right information. That's my take on it. I could be wrong. So Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rutherford. I think it would be helpful to have uh, Deputy City Manager uh, Scott Smith kind of address this. He, he's well familiar with this, so I'd like a motion to suspend council rules to allow him to speak. Yeah, a motion on the table is to suspend council rules to allow uh, Finance Director Scott Smith to speak. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilor Pepin. Again, the question before the council is to suspend rules um, to allow uh, Scott uh, Smith to speak, or Finance Director to speak. Uh, all those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. No. All right. Eyes appear to have it. Eyes have it. You may come up. Thank you. All right. Hopefully, you can add some clarity to our discussion. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor, <clears throat> City Council. I think it sounds like we're getting off the idea of twenty-five thousand or greater. My my concern with that, just to just add clarification, that's just going to make all solar, commercial, uh, residential exempt from property tax and also what that would language would do is if my solar was only had an assessed value of tw of 10,000 I would get an exemption for 25,000 so that's that's where the I think if you just focus in on the dollar amount that's probably a, g a good way to do it <clears throat> the reason um, the assessor came up with this value of 25000 How we zeroed in on that is her experience is kind of the average value of your typical residential solar array that you see on, on people's roofs that they do is typically valued now at about 20000 is what she came up. So that's where the twenty five came from was to give some additional room over and above this this twenty five this $20,000 assessed value. So... But, yeah, that was the intent, but 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 certainly thirty is not unreasonable, or or the, you know the discussion you've had. But that's how we came up with kind of that twenty five when we did it. Thank you. Are there other questions for Scott while he's here? Yes, Councilor Gibson. Twenty five thousand. How much does that actually change the tax bill for for a residential? Mm -hmm. It would be twenty five thousand if they had a twenty five thousand dollar exemption. How much would? What is the actual dollar value when somebody comes in to pay their tax bill? Is it five dollars, five thousand dollars that they're paying would be paying if this exemption didn't exist? Well, it would be so it, it'd be like twenty five times thirty bucks. Our tax rate's a little less than thirty bucks, but roughly, I'm just going off the top of my yeah. head. So, so that basically, it's a, a it would be no more than like thirty dollars or thirty five dollars. Yeah, it'd probably be like sixty bucks, okay. some, something in that neighborhood would be the max. Great. Other questions? All right. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. All right, we do still have the amendment on the floor. Uh, I will allow for further discussion if folks have it. Councillor Gibson. My disagreement with this exemption still stands. But for that little amount of money, I'm not going to stand in the way of having it. Thank you. That was really what I needed to hear. It's just that my feeling is that when you create exemptions that favor one part party over another, that's not what we're supposed to be doing with a tax system. And every single person who, own, who owns a mobile home in this city cannot have solar panels because none of the companies will install them on mobile homes thank you councilor with them thank you 
I did second the motion for the purposes of discussion. I'd like to remove my second. I think it would just clean it up and I'd be prepared to offer another amendment. Second is removed. Is there another second? I'll just withdraw my right. motion. Motion is re removed. Thank you. All right, amendment. Yeah, That's I'd like to amendment. move that we amend the ordinance uh, to increase the value from 25000 to 30000 All right, the amendment on the table is to increase the value from 25000 to 30000 Is there a second? Seconded by second. uh, Councillor Parody Catanzaro. Discussion. Great. All right. Seeing as there is no discussion, again, I want to be clear that the motion is for an amendment to change the amount from twenty-five thousand to thirty thousand. If you are in favor of this amendment, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. Is this a discussion point, or are you ready to vote? Discussion. All right. Very quick, please. Just to be clear, the whichever is less still stays in the original yep. whichever is less will okay. still be there yes we have not amended that portion all right so again i will state it again the motion on the table is to change the number from twenty-five thousand to thirty thousand all right if you are in favor of this amendment you will state by saying yes if you are not you'll state by saying no the clerk will call the roll councillor pepin yes gibson no parody cut and zero Yes. Michaud? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. All right. The uh, amendment is adopted. All right. Your Honor, I move for the adoption of the ordinance as amended. Thank you. The motion on the table is to adopt ordinance 8-24 as amended. Is there a second? Seconded by Councillor Parody Catanzaro. Discussion. Councillor Witham. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the conversation and sort of the deep dive. Uh, it's uh, it's sort of geeky, I know, right? Because we got into wordsmithing and dollar values and a deep exploration of taxation. Uh, I find that cool. I guess that's why I run for the city council, right? <laughs> that stuff's just cool. Uh, sorry, it is. Um, you know, to the point that, and, and I hear Councillor Gibson's uh, argument, if you will, with regard to it benefits some and not all. Um, that is the purpose of tax exemptions. Uh, we have others. Um, I don't have solar in my house, so this is not going to benefit me. I I could put solar, but I have like lots of trees, so I'd have to get a lot of chainsaws out. I'm not doing that. So <laughs> um, we have elderly tax exemption. Uh, I'm not there yet, so I can't take advantage of that. Uh, we have veterans tax exemption. I'm not a veteran, unfortunately, so I can't take advantage of that. So there are lots of exemptions that we have for very legitimate and important reasons. Um, this one is not a huge financial one, certainly not. Uh, it's more optics than anything, but it, I think it's the right thing to do to incentivize this. So, again, why I support it. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Gibbs, or Goodwin, excuse me. Uh, just to add to that, I, I mean, I think it's an important one to renew. Um, it, you know, if as someone that has recently undergone a uh, solar assessment and had it installed in my home, if the uh, burden of a higher tax bill was something that was at the forefront of my mind, it's a disincentive to move forward with this thing that could otherwise be beneficial to uh, certainly the environment, the community at large because of that. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think, a small, a small uh, sacrifice to the overall tax income to uh, allow the incentive to move forward. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Seeing as there is none, if you are in favor of the adoption of amended ordinance 8-24, you'll state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. The clerk will call the roll. Councillor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Gibson. No. Parity Cotton Zero. Yes. Misho. Yes. All right, ordinance 8-24 as amended has been adopted. City clerk caught me off guard. I know, that was great. <laughs> uh, thank you for the robust discussion, everybody. That was great. All right, moving on. We're going to our resolutions tonight that are under unfinished business. This will bring us to resolution 31-24. Uh, the chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 31-24 to notify the city tax collection uh, 
excuse me, tax collector that the city council will not accept a tax deed on properties located on Wexford Lane and Blackwater Road subject to an unredeemed tax lien, which if approved would prevent the city from accepting the tax deed on certain properties due to undesirable obligations or liability risks. City Clerk. Resolution number 3124, to notify the city tax collector that the city council shall not accept a tax deed on properties located on Wexford Lane and Blackwater Road subject to an unredeemed tax lien. Thank you. Resolution 31-24, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment, dare I say. <laughs> <laughs> no amendment being offered. Uh, Chair will look for a motion on Resolution 31-24. Councilor Gibson? I move the motion. All right, Councilor Gibson moves for the adoption of Resolution 31-24, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Again, the motion on, uh, before the Council is to adopt Resolution 31-24. Is there discussion tonight? All right, seeing as there is no discussion, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 31-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. Is this another discussion? Just a real quick point. Um, the clerk reads it for the second reading. Correct. After you've already read it. Yes, you might have noticed that I add a little bit more information for those who happen to be watching at home so that it's clear as to what we are voting on. I think it's also helpful for council members who are filtering through a variety of number of resolutions and ordinances. So it's just for extra, 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 extra clarity. Okay. Thank you for noticing, though. <laughs> Um, just trying to speed things oh up. no we're, I, I don't think that my reading those is what's slowing us down tonight um, <laughs> um, all right if you are in favor of the adoption just a little jab you know I had to uh, if you're in favor of the adoption of resolution 31-24 you'll state by saying yes if you are not you'll state by saying no the clerk will call the roll Councilor Witham yes Goodwin yes Cameron yeah Messier Pepin? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Cotton-Zero? Yes. Michaud? Yes. All right, resolution 31-24 has been adopted. All right, we'll move on to our next resolution, resolution 32-24. The chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on resolution 32-24 to notify the city tax collection collector, I keep writing that wrong, that the city council shall not accept a tax deed on certain properties subject to an unredeemed tax lien, which, if approved, would also prevent the city from accepting the tax deed on certain properties due to undesirable obligations or liability risk. City Clerk. Resolution number 3224, to notify the city tax collector that the city council shall not accept a tax deed on certain properties subject to an unredeemed tax lien. Thank you. Resolution 32-24, having read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. Right, no amendment being offered. Uh, chair is looking for a motion on Resolution 32-24. Councilor Cameron? Councilor Cameron makes a motion to adopt Resolution 32-24. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilor Goodwin. Motion before the Council is to adopt Resolution 32-24. Is there a discussion? All right, seeing no discussion. Um, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 32-24, you'll state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. The clerk will call the roll. Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parody Catanzaro. Yes. Michaud. Yes. Right. Resolution 32-24 has been adopted. All right. Moves us to a Resolution 33-24. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 33-24 to authorize the city manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and contract with the ENE Systems of New Hampshire, Inc. of Bow, New Hampshire to replace air conditioning systems at the Summersworth Police, uh, Police Station, which, if approved, would appropriate $60,000 of American Rescue Plan funds towards the replacement of the AC system at the police station. City Clerk. Resolution number 3324, to authorize the city manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and contract with E&E Systems of New Hampshire, Inc. of Bow, New Hampshire, to replace the air conditioning system at the Summersworth Police Station. Thank you. Resolution 33-24, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. All right, seeing that no amendment is offered, the chair will look for a motion on Resolution 33-24. Councilor Pepin? 
Move for its adoption. Councillor Pepin moves for the adoption of Resolution 33 24, seconded by Councillor Michu, or excuse me, <laughs> Messier. I did, did that last time too. Um, motion for the Council is to adopt Resolution 33 24. Discussion. Yes, Councillor Witham. Yes, real quickly. I, I think the value here, obviously, we need the new AC system because the current one failed. Uh, but the use of the American Rescue Plan funds uh, removes this from being a budgetary matter. Uh, when we discussed this in finance, it was really less about getting the AC unit and more about how we funded it. So it doesn't create that funding burden in the upcoming budget. That's at least, you know, it's 60000 we don't have to worry about. So it's helpful. Thank you. Other discussion tonight? All right, seeing as there is none, if you're in favor of the adoption of Resolution 33-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. The clerk will call the roll. Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Yeah. Pepin. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parity Cantanzaro. Yes. Michaud. Yes. All right, Resolution 33-24 has been adopted. Brings us to Resolution 34-24. Chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 34-24 to authorize the city manager to contract with GMI Asphalt Inc. of Belmont, New Hampshire for fiscal year 2024 road resurfacing improvements and to repair and reconstruct the sidewalk of east side of Maple Street, which, if approved, would appropriate uh, $625,000 towards road improvement on West High Street, Pleasant Street, Silver Street, Fremont Street, and Parkview Terrace, as well as sidewalk improvements along Maple Street. City Clerk. Resolution number 3424, to authorize the city manager to contract with GMI Asphalt Inc. of Belmont, New Hampshire for fiscal year 2024 road resurfacing improvements and to repair and reconstruct the sidewalk on the east side of Maple Street. Thank you. Resolution 34-24, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. All right, seeing no amendment, uh, the chair will look for a motion on Resolution 34-24. Councillor Witham? Move for its adoption. Councillor Witham moves for the adoption of Resolution 34-24, seconded by Councillor Parody Catanzaro. Um, motion before the Council is to adopt Resolution 34-24. Discussion. Councillor Parody Catanzaro. Uh, yes, my discussion is woohoo. <laughs> um, this is inclusive of that section of West High Street, which on the opposite side of the road was uh, fixed last year, and I just cannot wait for that side of the road to also look just as nice. So just very excited about this. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Seeing no more, uh, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 34-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. The clerk will call the roll. Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parody Catanzaro. Yes. Misho. Yes. All right. Yeah, who indeed. <laughs> <laughs> resolution 34-24 has been adopted. All right. Brings us to our last resolution before us tonight. Resolution 35-24. Chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 35-24 to accept Whipperwool Way and Sandlot Lane as public ways, which, if approved, would allow the city to accept the deeds on these streets, making them public right-of-ways. City Clerk. Resolution number 3524, to accept Whipperwell Way and Sandlot Lane as public ways. Thank you. Resolution 35-24, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. All right, seeing none, uh, Chair will look for a motion on Resolution 35-24. Councilor Witham? Move for its adoption. All right. Councilor Witham moves for the adoption of Resolution 35-24, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Motion before the Council is to adopt Resolution 35-24. Is there a discussion? Yes, Councilor Witham. Yes, real quickly, uh, I think there are still one or two house lots to be developed, but the curb cuts are already in for those properties. Um, I've driven down through the neighborhood. It's particularly well done. Um, uh, and we heard the final closeout details from the city manager during his report tonight. So I think this is good to go. Thanks. Other discussion? Councilor Gibson. Quick question. I don't know if this can be answered. Um, Curve cuts have been done. Have water and sewer been put in place? Water lines are stubbed. It's all septic systems there, so no sewer to oh, be okay. dealt with. Thank but you. The point is well made. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 35-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Messier. Pepin? Yes. 
Gibson? Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Michaud? Yes. Rhythm? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. All right, resolution 35-24 has been adopted. All right, next um, is new business. Um, under new business tonight, this is agenda item 16 for those following along, we have a vote to ratify the three-year Summersworth Association of Clerical and AIDS, uh, SACA, uh, collective bargaining agreement, which is a school department union contract. Uh, this agreement was first negotiated and approved by the Summersworth School Board and is brought forward uh, to us tonight for final approval. What are the wishes of the council? Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Uh, move to ratify. Thank you. Councilor Parity Catanzaro moves uh, that the agreement be ratified. S looking for a second by Councilor Messier. Um, seconded by Councilor Messier. Question before the council is whether to ratify the three year Summersworth Association of Clerical Aids uh, collective bargaining agreement. Is there a discussion tonight? Councilor Witham. Thank you. The work that members of this collective bargaining unit do is very important. Um, I would argue it's not easy at all. Uh, I know the school board chair and others would uh, agree with that statement uh, and have made that known. Um, I do plan to support this tonight, uh, so to be clear out of the gate. Um, the difficulty with it is the dollar value associated with it. Uh, in year one, uh, it's over $350,000 of an impact to the school department budget. Um, important for the collective bargaining unit that is somewhere between 80 and 100 employees. Uh, so it's a significant chunk of our school system staff. Um, one of the speakers tonight or somewhere had talked about how the timing of this just isn't particularly good as we enter into a very difficult budget season. Uh, probably one of the more difficult I've had on, on council is the forecast is uh, becoming clearer. You know, the tax cap is going to allow the school department to increase their budget. You got to factor in the loss of revenue from the state. And that's really the bigger conversation here. It's, it's, it's how the state does not adequately fund an education here. We've all lamented about that for forever and a day, right? Um, the state doesn't hear us and we will continue to lament about it. But be that as it may, we have no control over that right now. Uh, Take away that revenue from the state, uh, the tax cap uh, uh, provision. Uh, we're allowed to increase the school department budget by 400 and something thousand dollars this year with the tax cap. This is not all of that, but it's close to it. Just one union contract. So it's important. I plan to ratify it, but it does create a particular budget challenge uh, that we're going to enter into. And, uh, I am certain that the school board was cognizant of that when they brought it to us, the, the, the first level of that. Uh, I've watched their meetings. Uh, they're agonizing uh, over uh, the budget that they have to prepare to comply with the tax cap to submit to us. Uh, and then it'll be our turn to agonize and work through it. But uh, that's just the reality of it. I just want to be very transparent with the public about what this is. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion tonight? Yes, Councillor Parity Catanzaro. Yeah, um, I will also be supporting this and just wanted to highlight, and I, I completely agree with um, what Councillor Witham said. It's very difficult. Um, one of the most important points I think that I heard earlier in our discussion was that if we don't fund this collective bargaining agreement, we're looking at two plus million, something in the millions of having to fund these if we were to need to contract out for these services, which we are obligated to do. We can't, this is not a pick or choose. Um, so I am in support of this agreement because it is, has been, you know, negotiated and um, by both sides and this will, you know, not give them enough, but give them a little bit more to hopefully um, stay here and to hopefully attract these very important workers to our schools. Thank you. Others looking for discussion? All right, seeing as there is no more, 
I just want to be clear, this will be a simple majority vote. Uh, so if you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. So I'll be looking for the clerk to call the roll, please. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. All right, the agreement is ratified. All right, next on the agenda is agenda item 17, which is comments by visitors. Summers Resort City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinion and views at council meetings in accordance with Council Rules 7-C. Time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. The speaker shall not enter into a debate with any person, the mayor, city council members, or the manager or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Yes, thank you. Make sure you state your name, uh, the ward you live in, and make sure that green button's on, but I think you know that too. <laughs> Green buttons already on. My name is Carrie Clark, 59 Franklin Street. Um, I just want to say, on behalf of the um, SACA paraprofessionals and administrators, thank you. We know this is tough, um, but my goodness, we need to support them. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to make public comment tonight? <laughs> thank you again. Say your name, where do you live in, make sure the button's on. <laughs> Be quick to Maggie Larson, uh, 16 Hamilton Street, uh, school board chair. Thank you to the council. I think that um, as difficult as this is, I think that we can, the communication and what is needed is is part of the whole discussion what we're what we're what we're about here in this city. And I really do appreciate it. A lot of work goes into this. Um, I think a lot of people will feel the collective support and that is incredibly supportive, you know, incredibly important to have. So thank you again and, and there's timeliness. So good night. Thank you. Others wishing to make public comment tonight. All right. Thank you so much again. Say your name and the word you live in and I think the button is on. <laughs> There we go. Thank you. Michelle Nash again. Hi, welcome back. Uh, 78 Winter Street, Ward 1. Um, I am part of the union that you just voted on, and I just want to thank you that I work with um, a whole bunch of people that work with some really um, challenging students, and they would appreciate the fact that that was a unanimous vote in their favor. That kind of makes it all kind of worthwhile. So do the kids, but thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else wishing to make public comment tonight? Anybody else? All right. Thank you so much to those who spoke. Um, next on the agenda is agenda item 18, closing comments by city council members. We're going to start to my right tonight. Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, let me begin by saying, and I know Councilor Messier has mentioned this at a past meeting, the traffic signal upgrade work on high street uh, is so welcome uh, it's working uh, quite well uh, the traffic queuing is less you don't stop for a red light when there are no other cars there uh, it's it was not inexpensive uh, that was nearly a million dollar project thank you to federal highways for the grant as cumbersome and as slow as it was uh, it's 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 paying dividend it's it's hard to imagine you know you drive through there where did we spend a million dollars on that corridor? Because, you know, they replaced cabinets and they, you know, added cameras and sensors and things of that nature. So it's not readily apparent to the eye, but it's readily apparent to the driver when you, when you pass through there. But I saw Councillor Dumont recently, and I was reminded of his frequent laments from the chair in Ward 3 when he was council there about the signal at High Blackwater Road and Indigo Hill Road. Uh, it's an intersection notorious for accidents. The intersection is not properly aligned. Uh, the turn lanes you can't see. Uh, and over the weekend, uh, on Saturday, uh, Saturday afternoon, there was yet another car accident there, right? I know that we were all very hopeful with the upgrade of that intersection as part of this project that we would be able to release Indigo Hill Road traffic before we release Blackwater Road traffic or vice versa, whichever way the sensor determined it, but not both at the same time. Very much like the signal up here at Washington West High and High functions. That would solve the problem. Uh, 
I'm not sure if we should route that through Traffic Safety Committee. I'm thinking that's where we'd probably take the first uh, look at this. But we said for a long time we couldn't do that with the old controller. Uh, we were promised we'd be able to do that with the new controller. I'm hopeful we can get to that. And I will call Councillor Dumont, and he and I will drive in opposite directions to prove that it works. <laughs> so I'm anxious for that. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, Item two, uh, a public works request. I, I think something that uh, is a bigger work project than can be completed in a day. But it goes to community image. So, and it gets magnified this time of year because of snow plowing and car sliding and all of that. But, and it's a small thing, but it adds up to be a big thing. And it's bent and crooked street signs. <laughs> I don't know what the number is in the city. I think I go on low end, 150 signs are out of whack. Maybe that's low. Uh, some are just bent over. Some look like a piece of rigatoni. Uh, you know, there, there's one at the end of Cemetery Road that gets knocked over. Thank you, Public Works, for putting it back up. Uh, but the sign is bent. Uh, the, they've propped it up with a wooden branch. <laughs> uh, it's just, we, we need to, to it's, it's like, a crew of one or two on a mission with a truck with all the equipment just parade around the city and straighten signs out and fix them. It's an image thing. Uh, again, one or two is not bad, but when we're talking 150 plus, it's a, it's a work product that we need to focus on. And lastly, uh, I've commented enough on the budget, but I'll tie it to the mayor's comment about the Ed 306 rules and how the commissioner is looking to increase the class sizes, for example. It's not lost on me that where the state fails to fund education, that wouldn't it make sense for them to increase class sizes because they know the local community can't fund it and they're not going to fund it. So the only escape route is to have higher class sizes allowed by the Ed 306 rules. It's a fascinating game that the commissioner is playing here, and it's not a game that anybody wins. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of losers in that game. So I'm not sure I'm glad you brought that to my attention, Your Honor, but because it, it doesn't sit well. But more to come, uh, but I've connected a few dots there, and I don't like the, the picture that it paints. Thank you. Uh, next up, Councillor Goodwin. No comments. Thank you. Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if you have an opportunity to reach out to one of your state representatives, they're going to be voting on some education bills. Um, I believe it's tomorrow, so there's still time. It's HB 1583, HB 1656, and HB 1686, which is all steps to providing adequate education to the students. So it would definitely benefit anybody who could reach out to them and please encourage them to vote in favor of these bills. It's just going to help everybody in the long run. So appreciate that. Um, I would like to give a kudos out to the Public Works Department. Um, when I was walking Fenway the other day, there, I noticed this hole in the road, and I'm like, oh, God, what the heck is that, right? So I took a picture, and I sent it over. Well, it had been a cover that had come off a pipe, and I could see Fenway falling in it, actually, so that's why I really reached out to them. But anyway, thank you for the quick response. Um, I know the road is going to be getting redone, and it will have a proper cap on it when it's redone, but thank you for that because, yeah, I could see him now. And I can hardly wait for the dog park to open because you all hear my stories about Fenway, but Fenway has a little sister now who's a puggle too. So I'll be glad when we get that open. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Messier. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would just say that, first off, I'm happy to see that there's some action on Elm Street, i.e., the fence around the former hotel, that should be coming down. Profile garage, the other garages, the other house on Elm Street, and cutting of the 
trees that were pretty much worthless. They're a box elder tree. They really have no use. Uh, so I'm happy about that. I'm happy to see the final product. Um, so that's enough on that. And hopefully there'll be more to come. If I could get an update on the two solar lights for Memorial Drive, part of the uh, whatever that project was that going on longer than Elm Street. So, And we're getting close to St. Patrick's Day, and I know our highway guys are busy, but can we get some of these Christmas decorations down? The tree, I mean, I'm, it, it's over. So if we could do something. Um, and that's it. Um, other, I got one, the warming center. We seem to, I thought by 9 o'clock, 9 a.m., 9.30, they're supposed to be off-site. I come back from Home Depot to head towards my house, and they're out front sunning themselves. I'm not going to be happy if we have tables and umbrellas in April. So can, we, can, can I get a copy of the agreement and see what the details would, are supposed to be? and why they're not being followed. Thank you. Absolutely. Councilor Pepin. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess this is going to be out for the, my request is to the residents on Rocky Hill Road. This afternoon, there was a car that went past my house. I couldn't even tell you what color it was. It was going so fast. And it wasn't even three minutes later, another car I don't know if they were having drag races, and he was behind, but he was going just as fast, if not faster. I know I spoke to the police chief before about it, and he says, if you can give me a time or a program, you know, some type of a system, you know, we'll try to look for it or whatever. I guess I asked the neighbors of Rocky Hill Road, is that if you know who it is, if you could tell them to slow down. I mean, I couldn't, if, if I would have called the police department, if I would the first number I would have put on the phone, it would have been in, they would have been in Rawlsford. Uh, it is just unbelievable. My neighbors next door, their daughters years ago, ended up getting hit by a car because the car couldn't stop because it was going so fast while they were backing out of their driveway. And that's what I'm scared of is that uh, these cars are traveling so fast. And it, it's in front of my house, it's a good shot. If you stand on the top of the hill from where the farm is, you can see almost a mile down the street, and it's pretty straight. So they, they get a good sight, sight, but they can't see down over the hill or anybody backing up out of the driveway. So I guess if anybody in my area, in Rocky Hill Road, knows who it is or whatever it is, I think one of them is a, a charger. I'm not quite sure because it goes well fast. I can't make identification. But um, if you have an idea who it is, uh, if you could tell them to slow down, I would appreciate it. So, um, and talking about signs, the speed limit sign on the Otis Road, which the highway put up about a month ago, is back down, leaning back on a 45 degree angle. So uh, I guess somebody doesn't like that sign. So I think they just like to keep it on the side. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor Gibson. I, I want to say that I appreciate the fact that the council voted unanimously to approve the contract with the school department um, it's tough work that they do and they deserve to be compensated appropriately for it I wish we could do more for them but as Councillor Witten has said it's going to be a tough year um, beyond that the, um, I have to agree with him also on Blackwater Road and Indigo Hill. I would really love to see a staged intersection because I use that on a regular basis and I've come close to getting clipped by people flying up from Indigo as I try to turn on to High Street because I can't see them. Um, so that would be a great improvement to that 
And I saw that accident on Saturday, too, and that was the first thought that came through my head. Uh, the other thing that I, I wish we could find a way to address is the mess at the intersection of West High Street and High Street because I come up, I have a lady that I pick up on a daily basis to give her a ride home. Um, I'm coming up Washington Street and I have to set through sometimes two light cycles because people seem to think that the middle of the intersection is a good place to stop when the light in Berwick jams up traffic and you're sitting there and you can't get by them. Um, I don't know what can be done about that, but I would really like to see if there's a way to resolve that issue because somebody at some point is going to pull a road rage and decide to find a way through that and there's going to be a few bumpers laying on the ground. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Councilor Parody Catanzaro. Yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to recommend an article that I read earlier today um, by one of our former colleagues over in Rochester um, in Foster's. Uh, the title of the article is, Yes, Affordable Housing in My Backyard. Um, and f I just want to read the first couple of sentences here, and then there's some really interesting statistics about um, affordable housing and homelessness in here. Um, this is from uh, Palana Belkin, who was a former city councilor and mayoral candidate in Rochester. It was late June 2022. I had spent a couple months looking for a new place to live, but hadn't found anything dog friendly at that time. So instead of moving into a new apartment, I began a week long sprint through moving everything I owned into a 10 by 10 foot storage unit. I was just barely settled into a new promotion at work. And just eight months earlier, I had received 30% of the vote for mayor of Rochester. But that week I became unhoused. I won't read the whole thing, but I just thought it was a really compelling um, story of someone who did not expect to become unhoused and thankfully had um, enough connections and, you know, had a solid job to be able to afford to put her stuff in um, storage for a little while and her and her dog lived out of her car. Um, and, and thankfully it was only a number of weeks um, until she was able to find a place. But uh, further on down, I had never heard the statistic before. New Hampshire currently has the third highest rate of homelessness in the country. We talk a lot about this being a global and a national problem, but the third highest rate of homelessness in the country with 11 unhoused individuals per 1,000 housed ones. New Hampshire's 52% increase in homelessness. 52% increase in homelessness between 2019 and 2002 and 2022 stands in stark contrast to the national average increase of 12%. So I just wanted to add that to the conversation that we're having about affordable housing and homelessness. Um, you know, I'm often looking at how are we doing in, in comparison to our neighbors and to know that New Hampshire has such a higher rate of unhoused people um, is really shocking. And just adding that to the conversation to um, all of the uh, affordable housing um, uh, solutions that we that we can. Um, I wanted to, pivoting to another topic, um, I had brought up that I was at a community event where childcare was brought up and someone was singing the praises of SYC and how she had benefited from that. Um, that was a Leadership Seacoast event. They had their Economic Development Day here in Summersworth, which was really exciting that these leaders from all over the Seacoast came to Summersworth. Um, and we did some walking tours around Summersworth, so I wanted to thank um, Director Mears for being one of the walking tour guides and really providing a ton of really helpful information um, to all of those people and um, just thank them for having um, Director Mears and myself and our, our Falls Chamber President uh, be walking tour guides around the city. It was really cool to have people excited about what's coming up here. Um, and then I also wanted to uh, thank Director Bobinski for, I, I had read in the um, in the monthly report, uh, a note about asking the engineers 
to assess that crosswalk that uh, several of us have been talking about there, um, whether there was those three crosswalks and we desperately need that fourth one at uh, Highland Constitutional and High Street. So I'm very excited that that's being looked at. Um, and finally, um, you know, just wanted to reiterate that it, um, I have heard a lot of people talk about SYC and how much they love it. Um, it was on um, the budget that we received, the draft budget that we received. It was sort of in a middle tier of potential cuts that would have to be made to meet a tax cap budget. And I really hope that we don't get to that tier because that to me just shows, you know, the direness of the situation because I think everybody loves that program and hopefully we will um, do everything we can to save it. Um, this past weekend was um, the Great Backyard Bird Watch, and I'm happy to report that cedar waxwings have returned to my backyard. That's all. I hope that means spring is soon. <laughs> um, Councilor uh, Mishu, you're up. Nothing you're this evening, Your Honor. Thank you so much. All right, that brings us to agenda item 19, which is future agenda items. Are there any agenda items requested for future meetings that we haven't already covered? All right. Um, next is agenda item 20, which is non-public. We have none. Last on the agenda is item 21, which is adjournment. Councilor Gibson moves that the city council will stand in adjournment until the next regular scheduled meeting, seconded by Councilor Goodwin. Uh, question before the council is adjournment. If you are in favor, please state by saying aye. Please state by saying aye. aye. <laughs> Thank you. Aye. If you are opposed, say no. All right, ayes have it. Thank you so much. We are adjourned.